Hey guys, it's Andrew from 510 Books, and it is, um, what is it? It is Tuesday, February 1st, 2022, and it is, I'm in my house, not in the warehouse, as you can tell, I'm in the bookstore, in my house, and I'm going to do some work online in terms of listing on eBay. But I want to talk about why so many resellers, specifically that I know of, book resellers and some other media resellers are leaving FBA and going to Merchant Fulfilled or Fulfilled by Merchant through Amazon um, and or eBay. So I've been selling on, on um, books through Amazon through their FBA program since 2014, seven and a half years. And then I got into Merchant Fulfilled and then I got into eBay. So just talking about online in this video. The thing that triggered me about this or put this thought in my head to make this video is I saw a post on a Facebook group from a long time book reseller longer than me, who was a big proponent of FBA program as many people were before the fee, po fee apocalypse is what it was called. When the fees went up about four or five years ago and books that you could send in like 10, $12 books that you can make five or six buck off, bucks off of disappeared. You can no longer send those in for FBA. That got rid of a lot of people, and just in general, a lot of people left FBA, but a lot of people did stick around um, and, you know, got more into long-term, say, uh, long-term, long-tail books, which are books that have higher ranks on Amazon. Their sales rank is higher, usually over a couple million, not a million, but I would say over, definitely over five million, but but over like two or three million in, a, in sales rank uh, that tend to bring... Um, more money. So it could be a $50 book, $100 book, $200 book that might take six months, a year, whatever, but it will eventually sell. So people moved into that more um, on FBA and also on Merchant Fulfilled. Uh, so anyway, a lot of changes with FBA program over the years. I understand that. I know Amazon is always changing things up without really giving us any warning at all. Suddenly they change, make these big changes, increase fees or uh, reduce our storage lim uh, limits or, um, you know, ban certain books, whatever it is. There's a lot of things that suddenly happen with Amazon. And I'm aware of that, but that just comes with it. That's what you have to deal with if you want to take advantage of their powerful FBA program. So here's some of the reasons that I have read and heard for why somebody would switch from FBA to Merchant Fulfilled. Lower fees, control over shipping and, and packaging, this one, more able to list more high rank books. Okay, I don't know what that means. Storage limits. Uh, so there's no storage limits on Merchant Fulfilled. There are storage limits on um, FBA. That while your book or media item is in their possession, it can get lost or damaged in the warehouse. Um, claiming that they can ship faster and some, sometimes than a fulfillment center. Um, and from listing your item to it going live is quicker through Merchant Fulfilled. So of all the ones I just told you, there's only two. Well, there's only really two. I mean, not just two that are true, but two that I feel that are um, valid, I should say. So the first one is lower fees. Yes, there are lower fees through Merchant Fulfilled than FBA because of the pick and pack fee. Um, and there might be something else as well. I do not remember every single little fee on FBA, but yes, the fees are higher in general, but again, it depends on where the price is for the book. Certain price ranges for the book, uh, and again, I'm using books as an example. It could be a CD, could be a record, could be an audio book, it could be DVDs if you're able to sell DVDs, it could be an audio cassette tape, VHS tape, but the fees, the fee differences vary. Um, where you are, you know, a $10 item versus a $150 item versus a $50 item, $20 item, etc. right? It depends on where you are in that spectrum. But yes, in general, Merchant Fulfilled are have lower fees. However, comma, there are the things that come with that, right? So um, control over shipping and packaging. Yes, you do when you, just like on eBay, you are able to, to decide which envelopes, um, you're going to use, are you going to use, um, ones that have some padding or you can use thin ones, et cetera. How are you going to tightly pack it? You're going to leave it loose. So it moves around, you know, all that stuff, of course. Right. 
excuse me, of course you have more control. Uh, however, you do have to ship those items individually, right? Versus Amazon taking care of that, which is why the fees are higher. Um, all right, storage limits. Yes, FBA program currently limits us to 1,000. However, I've heard from numerous book and media resellers that if you send in a lot and you sell through pretty quickly and you get close to that 1,000 uh, storage limit, that they will give you a bump in uh, in your limit. Now, this is a new phenomenon in the last couple months. I haven't experienced this personally, so I'm just talking about other people's experiences that they've told me about, um, but I don't doubt them. So yes, there's a storage limit. However, that's next once you start sending in a lot of items and selling through pretty pretty well. Um, lost and damaged items in the warehouse. Yes, it does happen. It's happened to me over the seven and a half years. Is it an epidemic? It hasn't been for me. Has it been for you? If you send in 100 items, is there more than 5% that get lost or damaged? On a consistent basis, let's say every 100 you send in, every 1,000 you send in, even if it's 5%, that's pretty low considering all of the massive benefits that FBA gives us. Uh, this one makes no sense. Sometimes I can ship faster um, than a fulfillment center. Order comes in, hits your phone. It's a book. You got it on the shelf, you know, right there. You pull down the envelope. You go through it. You, you um, sorry, you print out the label, all that stuff package it up, let's say in 10 minutes. Great. You did potentially do it faster than the fulfillment center. However, are you going to take that one package? You're going to go running to the mailbox. Or are you going to want to wait? Or are you going to want to wait for all of them? What time of the day is it? Don't you ship at the, at the same time? And if you have people, if you have um, post office coming at a certain time every day to pick up your packages, what if you miss that? What if it's too early? So I call complete nonsense on that. Yes, you you are. It is definitely feasible that you are able to literally pull the item, put it in an envelope, sh uh, print out the labels, um, slap it on, tape it up, and it's done faster than the fulfillment center. But are you going to actually get it to the post office and on its way any any faster? I would say no to that. Even if. It came out, you know, 10 minutes before, and then you were going to drop it off. Maybe a little bit, but it's not it's not by much. Also, considering FBA, the items are supposed to get there within two days. So how are you going to beat that? What's the other one? Um, yes, it is true that when an item, um, or when you list an item on through Merchant Fulfilled, that it should go live within about 10, 15, maybe 20 minutes, and then someone could buy it. Um, hypothetically, yes. If there's a, if you have a book that is related to some event that happens, you should sell it quickly. But my question is, why didn't you list it already anyway? I mean, how much crap do you have to list on Amazon? On eBay, I have a lot of stuff to list, but on Amazon, I listed all my stuff in FBA and sent it in. This is the only only ones I have to list. A merchant fulfilled. Um, so technically, something could happen, and and someone really might want. Um, 1863 laws of war and then I could list it right away and then it'll sell versus if I if I put it in a shipment and then I ship it out to the warehouse it takes a couple days and then it goes a lot and then and then they scan it in and then another day or so of course right but you know what are the chances that you're going to have that exact book and you've been sitting on it why are you sitting on the book why aren't you listing it so to me that is true but um it, also, the other factors are whether or not it makes more sense to list at Merchant Fulfilled or FBA. It makes more sense to list at, F, list at FBA, then why are you listing at Merchant Fulfilled? Which which takes me into, um, well, give me a second. It, it takes me into the differences between FBA and Merchant Fulfilled and why I think this whole thing is ridiculous. So you can do whatever you want with your business and you can come up with all kinds of rationale that makes sense to you, but... Looking at it subjectively, a lot of these reasons don't make sense. So first of all, the thing that trumps all of this is there are certain items that make more money on FBA than they do on Merchant Fulfilled. And there are certain items that make more money on Merchant Fulfilled or Fulfilled by Merchant than they do on FBA, regardless of where the fees are. Okay? Yes, you can list it faster on Merchant Fulfilled. But if you're going to list it faster Merchant Fulfilled, but you're making less money, 
or you can't make any money because there's too many other sellers on there, whatever the reason is, then why are you going to bother? Oh, but look over here, FBA, it'll take longer to get to the warehouse and, and all that stuff, but I'll make more money or any money at all. So what are we even talking about? Um, yeah. And so that's the bottom line for me that trumps all this stuff is there's only or, or that there's certain items. These items don't make sense, FBA. Those only make sense merchant fulfilled. The shipment that I just created yesterday and sh and sent to uh, brought to UPS today that was 21 books and CDs and one audiobook. All of those made way more sense on FBA than they did in Merchant Fulfilled. If I put all those on Merchant Fulfilled, I wouldn't make any money for a variety of reasons. Right? The FBA bump, um, competition, demand, price, all that stuff. And if you've been selling on FBA for a long time, you should know that. Um, so this is just a myth, this idea that, oh, one is, one is better than the other, or you should abandon one to do the other, which is complete nonsense. You, first of all, you can do whatever you want. I'm not saying it's nonsense that you should be able to do whatever you want. I'm saying that these reasons that, that you can't get around the irrefutable fact that, that some things make more money in FBA. Now we can debate about, um, whether, the all the negatives of Amazon, like potentially lost and stolen, <laughs> lost and damaged packages, potentially um, uh, oh storage limits, you know uh, fees going up, and general Amazon nonsense. Yeah, you know that's some people prefer not to deal with it. Some people don't. But I'm telling you, you're leaving money on the table. Period. And this whole nonsense of he says. I can list more high rank books. Uh, I don't know where it is. I can sell a lot more high rank books. That doesn't, so you, why would you do high rank books on FBA anyway? You should do a merchant fulfilled. So that doesn't make any sense. Um, <laughs> so yeah, so sell your high rank, your high rank long tail books, merchant fulfilled and eBay. Don't do FBA, it, you know, the way FBA used to be a long time ago when I first started, lots of people, including myself, would send in long tail stuff and you'd wait several years before it would sell. And it was fine because you didn't have to pay much money for them to store your items. So I'm not going to give up FBA and the massive benefit of not only I make more money on there with a lot of items, but also the massive benefit of, of once I get it out, once I ship it out, I'm done with it except two things, repricing and um, getting rid of that uh, item, or I should say um, disposing of that item, whether I have it sent back to me or Amazon takes possession of it. That's it. Disposal and repricing, right? I mean, things come up like, um, what do you call it? Uh, other things could come up with Amazon, but by and large, um, like a removal kind of a thing. Uh, or restricted or whatever. But by and large, that stuff doesn't happen that much, especially if you're sending in a lot. And and stuff, if you price it right, and you're sending in the right stuff, which you've been doing this a long time, you should know what to send in and it should sell quickly. Why would you give up that semi-passive income for more work on your part? It makes absolutely no sense. And again, I do a lot of eBay, so I know how much shipping is. And also the idea that, oh, I'm already doing, I'm already shipping on eBay, so you know, adding another 10 or 12 or whatever, however many five a day I'm selling is not a big deal. It is a big deal. You have 10 items here. It's going to take you some time. I don't care what pirate ship or whatever you're using. The printer has to print at, print out the labels. You have to put those labels on there. You've got to put the item in. You've got to tape it up, close it up, whatever. It takes time. It's not going to take five hours, but it does take time can be another 20, 30 minutes, maybe more, depending. So let's not get silly because that could be spent listing more of those items that apparently are just sitting around that you're waiting for someone, something to happen in the news. So, so this video, I might seem a little annoyed, but I am because it doesn't make sense. Why are you going to give up that, um, uh, that income source? I love sending out stuff off to FBA because it gets out of my hair. I don't have to have it stored somewhere. And when it sells, I don't have to ship it. And then the money keeps coming in. So what's wrong with that? And absolutely, 
you are bypassing FBA worthy books because not every single book is going to make sense on a membership fulfilled. It's not because I scan books and I see the prices all the time. Now, prices merchant fulfilled did go up for a while during the pandemic because FBA Amazon stopped accepting new shipments for FBA. But a lot of prices have come back, come back down. So, that's no longer a consistent uh, you know reason. Anyway, so thanks for watching guys. <laughs> this is a little bit of a rant. Uh hopefully, you know, ruffle some feathers or get you thinking. Uh we'll see where it goes, but um let me know how you feel about it. Um, again, it's your prerogative to do whatever you want. I'm not telling you to do that you're wrong for for only doing Merchant Fulfilled. It just doesn't make sense to me why you would leave money on the table and not take some of the burden off of you and let Amazon do the work. I just don't understand it. And it's not better, so to speak, in the sense of like you're going to make more money because you've got to be good at knowing where to ship your stuff. Where to sell your stuff, rather. You sell this on FBA, you sell this on Merchant Fulfilled, you sell this on eBay, or maybe eBay and Merchant Fulfilled. What about local? You know, so it always makes more sense to have options. And do you agree with me? Let me know. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. If, you, uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I talk a lot about reselling, my reselling experience for the last, closing in on eight years now, seven and a half, eight years. Uh, on Amazon, like this video, eBay, and as well as locally in my store. So yeah, subscribe if you enjoy that kind of content. Take care, guys.